Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. Two months ago I released the netcode analysis for Battlefield 1 as well as a video where I explained the meaning of all the network performance icons and the values shown inside the network graph. Most of the information provided in these two videos is still valid, so if you want to check them out then you can find the links to these videos in the description down below as well as cards in the top right of this video here which also link to them. Now what I want to talk about today are the netcode changes that DICE introduced in the last patch. And we will start by having a look at the network performance or the delay that two players experience when they play on the same server. So to test that I use a high speed camera, two PCs where each of them has its own fiber internet connection and a 144Hz gaming monitor on which the game runs at more than 144fps with all graphic options set to the lowest value. To measure the delay between the players I point my high speed camera at the monitors and then have player 2 fire 20 times at player 1. Inside the high speed recording I then look for the frame where I see that player 2 starts to fire and then I count the frames until I see that the damage was received by player 1, which is indicated by either blood splatter, a damage indicator or the update of the health indicator depending on what happens first and what is available in the game. In addition to this damage delay test I also check the delay of the gunfire animation as well as the movement delay. So now after the patch I measured an average delay of 63.5 milliseconds for the damage delay, 62.5 milliseconds for the gunfire delay and 68 milliseconds for the movement delay. When we compare these two results from before the patch then we can see a delay decrease for the damage data and the movement which is an improvement. You can also directly compare all these results as both players always had a ping of around 25 milliseconds to the game server. Now let's move on to the really interesting changes of this patch. First of all, those of you who play Battlefield 1 on console were surely happy to find out that the scoreboard now finally shows it a numerical ping value for every player, which is something that the community has been asking for a very long time. Sadly the server browser still just shows it a signal strength indicator, so hopefully that will change next as players want to know their exact ping before they join a server. Then DICE removed the option to hide the network performance icons. And while some players are upset that this option is gone, I must say that I am very happy about that change, because when there is a problem with your connection or the server, then the solution is not to turn the alarms off. And when players upload videos that allegedly show a netcode problem, then these icons help the developers to figure out what could have caused this issue. So turning the alarms off didn't help anyone, not even those who create machinimas or wallpapers, because when you disable the user interface then these icons are hidden anyway. Now when it comes to preventing netcode issues then I want to once more recommend the Edge Router series from Ubiquiti, which offer a feature called SmartQ. This feature will prevent ping spikes that occur when something or someone else in your home network consumes your entire up or downstream bandwidth while you are playing online, like when your daughter comes home and her phone starts to sync pictures with the cloud. If you want to find out if you will suffer from ping spikes as a result from uploads, downloads or video streaming with your current router, then you can check the description down below where I put a link to a website that does a so called buffer bloat test. With SmartQ enabled you get a perfect score in this test which indicates that it will prevent those ping spikes. But if you get a B or worse then your router will not fully protect you from that. In the description down below you can also find links to two videos about these routers as well as a link to the expected SmartQ shaping performance chart for the various edge router models. It is very important that you check this list before you buy an edge router because it helps you to choose the right model for your internet bandwidth. Now I'm in no way affiliated to or sponsored by Ubiquiti so I do not gain anything from recommending their hardware. But I know firsthand how infuriating it is when you play a game and then suddenly your ping goes from a stable 25 milliseconds to 300 milliseconds just because your router does not prioritize the real time traffic of the game you play. So I want to share that information with you guys so that it will hopefully help some of you. Also unlike other overpriced so called gaming routers, the edge routers are actually quite cheap as you can get the edge router X for just 50 euros which has a smart Q shaping performance of at least 100 megabits per second, so that will do for most players. Now let's get back to the netcode changes in Battlefield 1. Here you can see the new aim lead indicator setting which indicates that your ping to the server is high and you need to compensate by leading your aim. But what does that mean? As we all know a high ping to the game server means that data must travel a long time to reach the server and so the other clients. 
This means that when a player with a high ping shoots at another player, then this can lead to the infuriating issue where that player receives this damage very far behind solid cover due to the high ping of the shooter and the way the game compensates his lag. A player with a stable connection and a low ping literally gets punished for the bad connection of the player who shoots at him. Now, don't get me wrong, I know that it's not fun to play at high pings, but this is simply not a fair design. Now, while this receiving of damage behind cover has been an issue since Battlefield 3 that affected both PC and console, it was definitely worse on console as EA provided fewer server locations on that platform, which caused that many players didn't even have servers with less than 200 milliseconds available to them. As part of the big netcode rework in Battlefield 4, DICE introduced the frame history time feature, which tried to mitigate the issue of receiving damage very far behind cover. This feature causes that, in this case here, the server will reject a hit once the shooter has a ping of more than 250 milliseconds. Battlefield 1 then built upon that netcode rework from Battlefield 4, and so it used the same system. However, in my tests I noticed that in the exact same situation, the Battlefield 1 server will confirm a hit even when the shooter has a ping of more than 450 milliseconds, which causes that the receiving player got hit very, very far behind cover. DICE realized that the frame history time approach was not ideal to handle this issue caused by players with a high ping. So during the last few months they have added servers in more regions to actually provide more players with low latency servers. But they also reworked how the netcode handles players with high pings, in order to mitigate the issue where players with a low ping receive damage far behind cover, and that rework was introduced in the last patch. So let's have a look at a few examples. Here we have a player with a ping of about 47 milliseconds, let's call him player 1. And then we got the shooter, player 2, who has a ping of about 147 milliseconds. When player 2 now fires at player 1, then the client of player 2 will run the hit registration. In this case it determines that he hit player 1 and he sends that information to the server which then runs its own check to confirm the hit. When the server agrees, then it sends the hit confirmation back to player 2 and the damage data to player 1. This form of hit registration is called client-side server authoritative, because while the client does the actual hit registration, the server still must confirm the hit or no damage will be dealt. When I then slightly increase the ping of player 2 to about 157 milliseconds, then we get the aim lead indicator, which tells player 2 that his ping to the server is too high. When player 2 now fires at player 1 again, then the hit will not register anymore. So this is similar to what the frame history time feature does in Battlefield 4 at more than 250 milliseconds. The benefit of the new system in Battlefield 1 is that you can lead your shot and so compensate for the delay between you and the server. This allows you to still hit other players while not making the issue of receiving damage behind cover worse. So in this example here, player 2 just needs to lead his shot and fire a little bit earlier, which is what the description of the aim lead indicator told us to do and then the shot registers again. This is because the hit registration now switched from client-side server authoritative to fully server-side and the server won't compensate for the delay of the shooter. This means that the only perspective that now matters is the one from the server and where he sees player 1 when it receives the information about the shot that player 2 fired. Let's have a look at a different example which should help you to better understand what is going on here. Now player 2 has a ping of about 244 milliseconds, which means that his data needs about 122 milliseconds to reach the server. When player 2 takes the shot, then player 1 sees himself here, while the server sees player 1 here, as he has a ping of 44 milliseconds and so he is slightly ahead of the server. Now, as the data from player 2 is traveling to the server, player 1 continues to move into the room. About 122 milliseconds after player 2 fired his gun, the server then receives this information and knows in which direction the projectile is traveling. It will then do the hit registration and detect that player 1 gets hit. After that it then sends the hit confirmation to the shooter and the damage information to player 1. The damage information will arrive first as player 1 has a ping of 48 milliseconds to the server, while the shooter gets the hit marker later since he has a ping of 244 milliseconds to the server. So this example here shows us two things. Number one, you need to lead your shot far enough so that it connects with the position of the player where the server sees him at the moment the gunfire data reaches the server. 
And number two, the higher your ping, the further ahead you have to lead your shot as a higher ping means more difference between where you see the player and where he will be once your shot reaches the server. So while the ping is a factor that has an impact on how far ahead you have to lead your shot, it's not the only one. In this example here, player 2 still has a ping of about 244 milliseconds. But now player 1 will move sideways, which means that he is slower than before. To hit him now, player 2 does not have to lead his shot as far as before, which means that the speed at which the target travels is another factor when it comes to how far ahead you have to lead your aim in order to hit another player when you have a high ping. The third factor is the direction of the target player. As you can see in this example here, player 2 has to lead his shot far less now. And when player 1 is standing still or running straight away from player 2, then he does not have to lead his shot at all. Not even when he has a ping spike of more than 800 milliseconds. So with this new feature DICE tries to mitigate the issue where a player with a low ping and a stable connection to the server gets punished for the bad connection of the player who shot at him while at the same time still allowing that player to get his shots registered when he manages to compensate his high ping by leading his shots, something that wasn't really possible with the frame history time feature. That said, this new feature can only be an additional measure to make the game both fair and enjoyable. It's imperative that EA and DICE continue to provide more servers in more locations across the globe on all platforms to ensure that everyone who bought the game has access to low latency servers where they can play Battlefield 1 without having to lead their shots. One more thing that I would like to mention is that there are still some situations where head glitching is possible, as you can see here in this example. I hope that DICE can do something about that in one of the upcoming patches. So I hope that you enjoyed this updated netcode analysis and explanation of the latest hit registration changes in Battlefield 1. I also want to thank the developers at DICE for answering my questions as that helped me a lot to put this video together for you guys. If you like this kind of niche content where I take a look at the inner workings of video games and show you how these affect your experience, then you can help me to cover the costs of this channel by supporting me through Patreon. The link is in the description below. Also, if you want to stay up to date with what I'm currently working on, then you can follow me on Twitter or Facebook, the links are also in the description of this video. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like, subscribe for more and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.